Welcome to my course on uh, electrochemical energy storage and this is module number 6 where we are talking about the sodium ion rechargeable cell. In the last uh, uh, couple of lectures we have talked about the positive electrode material, negative electrode materials and electrolyte material in sodium ion battery. So, now it is important that if you club together everything then how a sodium ion cell uh, rechargeable cell actually performs. So, this is uh, part of our uh, own uh, laboratory research work uh, and uh, uh, in fact a PhD work of a student and uh, let us see that how um, we can understand whatever concept I have taught in earlier classes how experimental data uh, whether it is in line to that or not. So, in this particular lecture we will talk about one particular uh, sodium ion uh, positive electrode and I told you it is an acicon type material that is quite interesting to uh, the community. So, this N A 3 V 2 P O 4 hole 3 that is a, as a case study. So, that I will describe what are the major challenges of this materials this nasigan based material what are the approaches that one can make to mitigate the challenges that is faced by this material for commercial adaptation. Then whether really nanostructuring is helpful, uh, what is the role of uh, any coating because we are talking about these things to mitigate the problems you will have to go for uh, nanostructured material, you will have to go for uh, carbonaceous coating that is the surface modification of the electrode material or uh, the bulk modification in terms of the doping. So, we will be also to talking about this uh, doping effect uh, as well. And um, this uh, is followed by uh, the symmetrical cell performance. It is interesting as I told that uh, in, there is no need to uh, use dissimilar material in case of uh, NVP which is abbreviated uh, form for Na 3 V 2 P O 4 hole 3 because uh, it can uh, uh, accept uh, one more sodium into the structure 3 is already there. So, fourth one also can be uh, accepted at little bit lower voltage. So, you can use that part as our negative electrode and the, uh, the other part as positive electrode. So, we can build a symmetric full cell. So, whether it is expand experimentally feasible or not that we will check. So, this structure I will not uh, go into much details because uh, already we talked about it. So, it has a large interstitial channel for first sodium ion transport, but out of this 3 sodium you cannot take all 3 because you know that your capacity is dependent on this uh, sodium ion extraction number of electron that is involving in this uh, um, reaction. So, that uh, part is difficult. So, two of them you can take it out accordingly I will, add, I will ask you to calculate the theoretical capacity of this material. Uh, you need to know that two electron is involved and molecular weight you need to know and you can calculate the theoretical capacity and check whether you are getting the experimental discharge capacity uh, or charge capacity which is in line to the uh, theoretical capacity. So, uh, sodium storage mechanism follow a typical two phase reaction uh, with uh, this Na 3 V 2 P O 4 hole P O 4 hole 3 to N A V 2 P O 4 hole 3 because two, elect two sodium you are taking out and uh, 8.26 percent uh, volume variation will be there. You can test it you just charge it and then stop the charging take the electrode out go for uh, the x-ray diffraction, uh, see what phase it has formed and uh, through it will refinement you know that what is the lattice parameter you are getting, you know the crystal structure, you can estimate the volume expansion or contraction and accordingly you can satisfy that what, whatever I am saying whether it is true. So, this is the structure uh, of Na 3 uh, V 2 P O 4 hole 3 and this is in the charge stage and there are two different types of uh, sodium ion you can see one is marked with uh, uh, this yellow and uh, another uh, one is green and this P O 4 
tetrahedra is marked as red, it forms a lantern structure and V 6 octahedra is marked blue. So, two distinct potential plateau that is very promising candidate for symmetric cell development. If you do a cyclic voltammetry, so this is a typical cyclic voltam voltammetry of the NVP that we prepared in our laboratory. You can see that this is the high voltage redox and this is due to uh, the insertion of sodium at relatively low voltage. So, at 3.4 volt sodium sodium plus that influence this redox couple and theoretical capacity will be getting for 117.6 milli ampere hour per gram. This can be used as cathode and at 1.6 volt around we are getting uh, this is due to the redox of V 3 to V 2. So, this is uh, vanadium, it is having multiple valence states. So, that is one advantage that it can change its valence state like manganese. Uh, so, it has multiple valence states. So, this redox couple is useful. Uh, here, theoretical capacity is about 58.8 milli ampere hour per gram, and that can be used as anode. Now, you remember when we talked about the capacity balance. So, one theoretical capacity is 58.8 milli ampere hour per gram and another one is 117.6. And apart from that, uh, this uh, uh, ACI formation, the reversible capacity, reversible capacity will also be there. So, uh, I think that this is a complicated problem uh, to you uh, to do the actual mass balance and see. Uh, construct a symmetric full cell, which we have done uh, later on. Uh, and probably I will ask uh, sometime uh, how exactly we will calculate, calculate this uh, depending on the half cell data. Of course, half cell data is required, what uh, you will be able to see to construct your full cell. And what is the theoretical prediction of the capacity and voltage that you are expecting from your full cell one is operating at 3.4 volt and other one is operating at 1.6 volt. So, you can understand how much voltage window you are having. Major challenge for this material is uh, low electronic conductivity that basically affects the rate performance and structural degradation during cycling induce capacity fading. So, these are the two major challenges we uh, need to solve. So, uh, what we did uh, if you reduce shorten the sodium diffusion path uh, enhancing the ionic conductivity by reducing the particle size. So, diffusion distance is less. So, if you have a diffusion coefficient which is not that fast, uh, but uh, you know x is equal to root over d diffusion coefficient into time. So, this diffusion distance you are reducing. Then uh, surface modification is another way by conducting carbon uh, coating or uh, introduction of a 2D carbonaceous material like reduced graphene oxide that you can improve the electronic conductivity uh, externally and that in turn will improve the rate performance of the electrode. And uh, then uh, enhancing the structural stability by doping that is one thing which is quite interesting that uh, the second one is the surface modification, external modification and this one is a bulk modification of the structure and uh, doping is possible both in the sodium side uh, and also in the vanadium side and uh, we chose this uh, alkali uh, ions potassium and magnesium uh, to, to uh, actually modify the properties. So, this is uh, the way uh, usually we prepare the nanostructured NVP and uh, microwave hydrothermal synthesis uh, was performed. So, all the precursor material they are mixed together at room temperature followed by mixing and then we do a uh, hydrothermal uh, treatment uh, for the phase formation and uh, then uh, some part of calcination is required followed by uh, this is this treatment is required to uh, form the powder and then finally, in argon tube furnace we heat treat it uh, because uh, of phosphate 
uh, uh, radical, uh, you cannot do it in an oxygen ambient and uh, temperature was about 800 degrees Celsius and then we got this kind of particle. You can see the average diameter for this particle is about 50 nanometer. Um, it is in nano size and uh, the surface area we measured by BET is also reasonably good 72 meter square per gram. Uh, to realize the effect of this nano structuring to the electrochemical properties, uh, you need to compare it with the micron size particle. So, sub micron size NVP also we could prepare uh, following the same procedure except uh, the intermediate micro F assisted hydrothermal treatment was omitted. So, then also we got this kind of microstructure. If you compare the earlier one with this one, suddenly the average particle size you can see it is quite large about 100 nanometer, a few hundred nanometers I should say and surface area therefore, uh, it drops down to 25 meter square per gram. Now, the electrochemical performance if you see that at lower rate uh, both material delivers similar capacity. So, you compare uh, with uh, this one is wet chemical part, uh, the soluble one, the uh, last slide and this one is uh, by microwave assisted hydrothermal synthesis. So, here you see the capacity, uh, you do not see much difference, right. So, except this, this plateau is quite um, uniform uh, flat as compared to this one, it is slight slope is there. So, um, some structural change uh, in terms of the phase uh, might be there, so that is reflecting here. But this uh, so called nano size NVP that shows uh, improved rate performance. So, if you compare this red one with the black one, so red one is your wet chemical part and black one is your microwave assisted hydrothermal part. You see this is giving much more uh, uh, better rate performance as compared to this one. Sodium ion diffusion coefficient is higher for nanostructure. So, that was our speculation. So, this is uh, your uh, wet chemical part and from the slope itself you can identify, I already told that from the Nyquist plot slope you can, you can basically estimate and I think I showed you also one example that uh, uh, how to estimate the diffusion coefficient from this Warburg tell and uh, the slope is much steeper here. So, that is basically uh, in accordance to our theoretical prediction, uh, it is indeed 10 raise to minus 15 here, although it is quite so small, but uh, one order of magnitude you can say it is better. And charge transfer resistance also significantly reduced. So, if you just uh, uh, do a proper uh, simulation of this, which is the red line here, uh, and uh, this is also the red line, and this these are the small, um, these are the symbols, uh, the experimental plot and then we fitted with, with one of the Randall circuit of our interest and we found that the charge transfer resistance significantly reduce in nanostructured uh, NVP. So, here it is 355 ohms and in case of uh, your wet chemical part, this is about 640. So, if you reduce the particle size in this case, it is improving the electrochemical properties. Then we uh, did this carbonaceous material, material coating. So, on top of that uh, we coated with uh, carbonaceous material, um, uh, partially graphitized carbon uh, we coat. Uh, we used a polyethylene glycol as a carbon source. This carbon coated NVB particles were uh, further embedded in a uh, reduced graphene oxide because you see that we planned this experiment based on our understanding that what could go wrong in this material and how to actually improve it. So, we had a bare material and then we adopted all this uh, nanostructuring or the carbonate carbon carbonaceous coating or embedded in the uh, uh, a conducting uh, 
wrap of uh, graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide. And then by uh, Raman spectra, indeed uh, we got these two characteristics band and we thought that this is indeed the disordered carbon which has been coated. And um, this is actually this uh, defect band intensity and uh, this actual uh, graphite intensity that provides the information of the crystallinity, the ratio, the number that provides uh, the uh, this thing that uh, uh, carbon layer crystallinity whether it is non crystalline or crystalline. And this TGA analysis what was done uh, that to tell you that how much carbon is basically coated. You can see that about 7 percent carbon is coated on the NVP and we just uh, define this thing as NVP at the rate means it is coated with carbon and about 0.5 percent of reduced graphene oxide. So, that is our final structure that we are having. Again we do electrochemical performance and as you can see this introduction of carbonaceous material that significantly improves the rate performance. So, rate performance charge discharge and efficiency uh, if you compare um, that, that is significantly uh, improves and the cyclability here the 100 cycles at uh, 1 C rate, uh, this is the efficiency part and uh, this part is uh, uh, the cyclability and uh, it uh, has the uh, same kind of behavior which I predicted uh, that uh, it, it is in 3 point more than 3 volt and this is around 1.5 volt you have this electrochemical activities. So, carbonaceous material significantly improve the rate performance and uh, as I told 70 percent of its initial capacity you can hold even if uh, you have a 10 C kind of uh, charge discharge. So, 10 C is a quite high rate and after 100 cycles about 81 percent of the capacity is retained that you can see from this view graph. So, that is also a good indication, but in half cell configuration. Then we start uh, to do the bulk modification. So, as I told the available site was sodium and vanadium. So, we doped it uh, this vanadium site uh, to improve the bulk phase conductivity because here the defects are involved. If you uh, just dope it with uh, a, uh, the, a cation with a reduced valence then oxygen vacancy or some other types of vacancy can be incorporated within the band gap and electron or hole can be trapped and that constitutes the uh, increase of the electronic conductivity. Additionally, this uh, dopant uh, which you replace sodium that also increase uh, the unit cell volume uh, because of the larger uh, ionic radius of sodium uh, there is considerably large as compared to sodium. And this lattice volume change uh, that uh, make this sodium extraction and insertion that is rel rel relatively easier. Because you know you have this much of space, sodium is a big ion, so it is trying to go and com coming out. So, if you can increase it little bit, then it will be easier. So, that was the concept. So, this ion selectively replace the immobile sodium 1 site because you know that there are out of 3, 1 was sodium 1. Uh, so, that uh, does not uh, really take part in any electrochemical reaction, only structural modification that it does. So, electrochemical performance uh, is suddenly improved. So, uh, as you can see from this figure and compare with the others. So, the highlights are 97 percent capacity retention, earlier it was 80 at 1 C rate for potassium and also magnesium this co-doped material. Excellent rate performance as you can see even at 10 C it uh, operates, it delivers 95 percent of the initial capacity. Sharp decrease of this charge transfer resistance with the dopants that is another good indication because easily the charge transfer can take place in the nanostructured one. 
So, for this it is 258 and remember for this nano structured NVP it was 355. So, it got reduced that we can get out of uh, this Nyquist plot using this kind of Randall circuit which is more or less similar to what we described earlier in case of lithium ion battery. So, you have one R s for electrolyte and then uh, a uh, uh, C p uh, is there constant phase element we use because of the depressed semicircle and then we use a charge transfer resistance and uh, we have the Warburg tell which you can see here. So, more or less reasonably good fit and then we estimated uh, the diffusion coefficient and uh, there was a significant uh, improvement of sodium ion diffusion coefficient for this material uh, NVP MK the double doped, doped one with respect to the one with uh, carbon coated and embedded in NGO RGO and that is also uh, much higher as compared to sodium structured NVP which I initially presented. So, this is a facile sodium ion diffusion and structural stability due to potassium ion incorporation and enhanced electronic conductivity owing to magnesium ion. They are responsible for some dramatic improvement of the electrochemical performance. It is not my intention to explain that why this is happening, uh, because uh, this story we built to write the paper and to explain it and convince. Uh, others that you see that this is the actual mechanism. What is more important that you think of something, some kind of model and experimentally you verify it that it is forming exactly like this. Whether this potassium is indeed uh, replacing the sodium which is immobile, we do not have any direct proof. Uh, it may be something else, but we understood that the potassium can increase the volume of the unit cell. So, that the sodium ion movement is uh, little bit easier. So, that is true and that is getting reflected to the electrochemical performance. So, that was the purpose that the science of it through your experimentation you will be able to prove and get a good material for sodium ion batteries. So, symmetric cell performance is interesting and this is the kind of reaction that takes place in cathode during charge and discharge as I told during anode uh, extra sodium is going in. So, you can see here N A 3 plus x that is why it put. So, this vanadium 2 plus to 3 plus that is the redox and here 3 plus to 4 plus is the redox. So, I, I leave it on you if you know the uh, kind of voltage that you are getting. Uh, and uh, the half cell voltage uh, of the um, NVP that you are getting in terms of the positive electrode, then you should get that what kind of voltage range it will operate. So, 3.4 volt minus 1.6 volt, so it will operate at 1.8 volt. I am not very satisfied with 1.8 volt battery. This will not serve my purpose as a practical battery, but you can construct with the same material both as anode and cathode and demonstrate the performance. Maybe its energy density will be low, its power density is quite high because you can see that it is operating at 10 C rate. So, the power density is quite high, energy density could be uh, a bit low because of this voltage and you cannot do anything because this is the redox of the vanadium that is uh, playing a major role in it. Uh, but uh, uh, it operates at uh, uh, that voltage range uh, both for anode and cathode uh, we can have the uh, capacity and also you know the reaction is quite different. So, uh, it is possible that uh, this gives a good rate performance at a high rate uh, in the cathode side, but in anode side it may, may, may be possible that its cyclability and uh, and the rate performance is not that good. In order to understand it, you will have to run this uh, cell at that voltage range. So, 1.6 volt range where only sodium is going in, uh, extra sodium is going in and coming out and then we will have to understand that if their electrochemical performance is at par with the electrochemical performance of the 
other cell. So, that is also important. So, this is the charge discharge characteristics profile. So, symmetric full cell output voltage is indeed 1.8 volt and this uh, NVP MK that means magnesium and potassium doped material and here also NVP MK that is uh, in the cathode side and this is the anode side that yields a specific discharge capacity of 77 milliampere hour per gram. This also you can calculate one half cell capacity uh, as I told is about 115 milliampere hour per gram and another one is given if I remember correctly is about 78 milliampere hour per gram. So, uh, you can estimate now that what should be the full cell capacity. Uh, but of course, uh, if you increase the rate at lower rate, it will follow the theoretical trend, but at higher rate as I told that uh, anode and cathode they can behave a little bit differently. So, it may not be um, properly correct. So, you can see at 10 C rate only you are getting 51 milliampere hour per gram. So, this is the kind of voltage that you are getting 1.8 volt the capacity is quite low. So, it is a uh, Reagan plot which is a plot of power density and energy density um, that uh, may not be that great, but the idea was to show you that one of the cathode material if I take it then uh, we can build a symmetric cell and see how this electrochemical performance how it is performing. It is performing quite good because you see that the cyclability up to 500 cycles is quite quite good. So, very marginal fall is there um, about 85 percent you are getting. So, in fact, uh, uh, it is 96 percent sorry this is uh, yeah from here to here. So, about 96 percent capacity retention after 500 cycles and that to a 10 C rate. So, this symmetric cell as a good power density material sodium ion cell, uh, this is uh, reasonably good uh, and in coin cell configuration of course, we did that. Uh, so, much work needs to be done and uh, if you understand the basics of uh, uh, the electrochemistry and uh, the way I taught in our earlier class, I get that that will give you a vivid picture that how to design the material, what are the parameters that you should think of. Uh, in improving the material quality and then you try different types of material and what types of material is available you should target that is also vividly you can uh, uh, you can take from my lectures be that electrolyte or positive electrode or negative electrode for different types of chemistry and uh, you will get a vivid idea how to do research and that is the purpose of this uh, elective course. So, this is only one reference because you see that uh, I am talking about uh, one specific material and as a case study. So, this is published uh, by one of my PhD students and uh, this paper you can read and this is reasonably good details we have described this. So, uh, I have taken an acicon type NVP as a case material and you remember that the same material I have used. Uh, as a case study for lithium ion battery intercalation for dual ion battery and this is exclusively for sodium ion battery. So, um, this is uh, the idea and what was the associated challenge and approaches to adopt the overcome the challenges then both microwave assisted synthesis uh, to make this nanostructured uh, material and also uh, by wet chemical synthesis, we could prepare micron such particle. Then what is the effect of the carbonaceous material incorporation? What is the effect of their bulk doping improving the properties? And finally, the asymmetric symmetric full cell and some part I, I uttered the word asymmetry. It is not asymmetry we understand is a slip of the tongue. It is symmetric cell full cell characteristics we have defined. Thank you for your attention.